main reason for that is that I need this uh, battery pack consisting of two Tesla modules for my solar plant. I will also exchange the motor and gearbox to an M motor and the drive shaft fitting the column axis. That will also make it lighter and I will also fit a new battery pack consisting of two of these BMU, BMW E3 battery modules and I will place them underneath the seating where I had a DC motor and that will also to improve weight distribution. Well, I'll show you as I get along. Here you can see the old uh, drive train. Underneath here we have the DC motor and that it's very heavy. Here we have the contactors for the forward and return and this is the controller. Here we have the Lada Niba gearbox and uh, this is also the auxiliary battery 12 volt 12 volts. Uh, what I will do is that I will I will replace this with just a shaft and flanges to fit the cardan axles and then I will put a sprocket or a belt drive I don't know yet and then I will put a, a ME motor here and in this position I will put down the battery pack that I will build from this BMB M E3 modules put it here and then I will put the auxiliary battery maybe in a container in the rear. So that is my plan. Now I remove the controller and the connectors, contactors, I mean, and all the wiring. And now you can see this is going to be a perfect spot to put uh, the new battery pack. And uh, I measured and maybe I can also put the auxiliary battery behind the battery pack. Sixty one point four kilos. That is heavy. Now I also disassembled the transfer gearbox from the frame, and uh, now you can see all the space for the new dry shaft motor and uh, also place for the new battery pack. I think this is gonna be great. Well, you can see it's uh, 29.65 kilos for the transfer gearbox. So this is altogether almost 90 kilos for just uh, the old drive system. Well, this is gonna be the drive shaft between the two uh, cardan axles and uh, this is just flanges I put, took from another Lada Niva transfer gearbox I had and I drilled the splines away and uh, this is ordinary bearings and this is a sprocket and I calculated uh, the maximum top speed with the gearing and uh, shafts and these uh, size of sprockets and it's going to be around between 50 and 60 kilo kilo kilometers an hour so uh, it's quite handy speed for this kind of vehicle I think and uh, in this case I just gonna cheat I'm, I'm gonna weld these sprockets and the flanges to this uh, shaft because uh, I don't have the machinery to do it and uh, I think it's going to be a proper way to do it and uh, if these bearings uh, wear out I make a new shaft. So this is my plan. see the finished uh, result of this uh, drive shaft. As I said before I welded the, the sprockets and the flanges because I have no machinery so I can make this 
splines to make it fit. And uh, but I think this uh, this is a quick and dirty way of doing it, and I think it will be properly for this uh, application. And my plan now is to build uh, some kind of subframe, so I can uh, put it into the frame of the rock crawler, and uh, I have to make this uh, motor adjustable compared to the shaft so I can tension the chain but uh, I have some plans I will show you uh, in the frame well now done some cutting and uh, I took all of it away because I don't want to just pile tubes up on another I'm gonna start fresh and here I can see all the parts I've cut away, some kilos. Here I'm trying to figure out how to make the subframe to uh, fit the transmission and motor. And I think I'm quite close. I'm going to attack this together and here I'm going to put some steel plates with uh, adjustable holes so I can move the whole motor back and forth. And uh, I can also make some supports on each side. And behind here, I'm gonna cut this because I don't need this piece here. And then I can also make some, I can make a small tube on the back side and then I can make a support. I think that's gonna be quite sufficient. Here is the engine plate with these adjustable fittings. Now I'm gonna Pack it in place there so I can adjust the motor and then I think I must make some kind of support so it doesn't bend and also maybe make some uh, adjuster here so I can tension uh, with, a, with a bolt or something. Well, now I fitted the motor and uh, it seems to be working. I will uh, make some uh, flanges to support this uh, fitting point for the motor. But then I'm uh, pleased that I'm going to cover these holes and then I'm going to fit it to the electric rock roller. The subframe is uh, completed. I've done some flanges to make it uh, stronger the motor mount and I also added some tubes underneath underneath for protection for the lower fixing point for motor and also the sprocket coming here so if I hit a rock or something it wouldn't be damaged now I have the subframe for the transmission in place I used the steel plate and also my telfer to get this in position and now I will try to figure out how to make these small fixing points I think that will be the greatest and there I also get good strength for the trailing arms so I will try to cut these small plates See how I can manage. Now the subframe is fitted to the frame, and now I'll we'll try to figure out how to uh, get the batteries, battery pack in position here. Uh, I'm not sure how to make this the best way, but uh, first I must make a reinforcement because I saw this one is a bit bended. I think this tube is maybe too thin. It's only two millimeters. But I'm gonna put a steel plate here, and uh, so I make that one stronger. I just test fitted the motor and the drive shaft, and it's uh, fitting quite nicely. After a lot of thinking, I decided to cut all the uh, old tubes away for the seating and uh, some fixing points for the old controller. Uh, it's always easier to start from fresh because I must try to get these uh, modules from the E3 pack 
and also the controller and the relays and everything. And I are trying to make this as water tight as possible also. And then if you're going to start with some old framing who doesn't fit 100%, it's not easy. This is the beginning of the box. We're going to contain the battery modules. I will have one on in the, the bottom here and then we'll make some flanges so I can put the, the second one on top. So it will be two of these BMB battery modules. And this will be underneath the seating. And I will also make a plate in the front here so I can make it somewhat waterproof. And there I'm going to put the controller and the main contactor. And then try to build the box around that. So that's my idea. Now I'm going to tack this together and then I'll make some... Uh, see if it fits in the, to the frame. Well, I'm trying to weld this uh, battery box without it getting too bent. But I, I welded the tubing first so we get some uh, stability. Then I try to weld it so it gets watertight. And here you can see I drilled some holes for the, for the battery module. And uh, uh, it fits in the frame, you can see later. I'm uh, test fitting the batteries and I uh, found out it was the easiest way to lift them like this. This is for the place for the battery. It's uh, out of alum aluminum and uh, it will be sitting uh, behind the seat next to the battery pack. Yes, here you can see it with a battery in place and then I will just uh, fasten it with a strap around it. Now the battery box is welded into place with all the fixing points for cables and uh, other things. And uh, I cleaned it and it's time to paint. Well, everything is painted and I started to fit the motor and the transmission. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the right color, so it's a bit different of gray, but it doesn't matter. Probably I have to make some kind of dust protection here, so I don't get too much dirt into the motor and transmission. Now I'm trying to get this uh, controller and uh, the main contactor in the best position. Here are the cables from the motor and uh, we put the plate in front of the battery pack and there I will use some holes to get the controller in place and then I will take this uh, box with main uh, contractor and put it here. Here you can see the controller and uh, box for the main contactor in place and I'm planning to put these uh, so I can see the colometer and uh, the switch ignition switch and back and forth here and then you can see the position of the auxiliary battery is here on this small battery tray and uh, I can use the wire loom as I had before, it's gonna fit quite good. Now the battery pack is, is installed and I started to uh, assemble the electronics. The controller is in place and also the box for the main relay. Now I'm gonna connect uh, the battery pack to the controller and uh, the relay. And then I'm going to start wiring up the 12 volt system. And then it's uh, time to run the motor. And that's going to be very interesting. Now the motor is running. I had some issues uh, with the old uh, controller. Uh, not old, the other one with, that I had uh, successfully, with help from uh, Keller Controls, fixed. But uh, I have the same problem again with that controller, so there must be something more wrong with it. But uh, I changed controller and uh, did some rewiring and now everything is working.
As you can see here, turn the switch on, press the button to forward. And then I have that, and you can see that the motor is spinning. Now I will tidy things up. I will uh, fit this control panel somewhere around here so I can see the status of the battery. You can see it here. And uh, also the switch and the rear and forward. And also I must connect the pump for the servo control steering and uh, the lights. So uh, I think I will do that in the next video when I also will perform a test run. So welcome back to the next episode. We'll be finishing up and uh, some test runs.